We do have to wait. Don't put we're, it at the end because then it'll skip. We're going to hide a code word in here for you, Satya, if you watch the video. All right, so in 7 1, go ahead and look at Carla's situation. Um, she remembers some stuff. She wants to try out some other things. Now, I also have up here for you, but I didn't crank a bunch for everyone because that would have been completely wasteful. Um, if you want to try to hypothesize some of this out, I have a couple of these triangles printed. You can cut, you can do whatever you want with these. And also, we have the geometry templates over here that you know if I trace it and then turn it, whatever, it will still be the same triangle, right, if I use the template. Um, so you can use any of those resources to try to work through this. By the end of 7-1, you should be able to say um, definitively if this will work or not. So dive into it. You get done with one, which I know is going to take you a few minutes. You can move on to two or three and start to deal with different types of shapes.
Hey, UPS, dude. <clears throat> My dogs are freaking out. I'm trying to talk to the dude through my doorbell. No, I just said nothing. Hello? moving stuff around on this truck. Hey, UPS guy, what's up, man? Oh, how's that? How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm over here at work. Do you need a signature for those packages, or are you going to be able to just drop them? No, I don't. All right, yeah, perfect. Yeah, they were the biggest things I could do. I was going to try to get rid of them early. Yeah, That's no, I, I totally feel that. All right, well, I appreciate you dropping that off. I'm going to be home here in like uh, 45 minutes to pull that stuff inside. All right, perfect. Now, that bottle is going to be a little heavier now. All right, I appreciate the warning. Thank you, you too. What a weird time to be alive. Do you ever just like think about like how weird it is to be alive in today's age? Back. Okay. When I was your age, not only was there not package tracking like there is today, like you could find out when it approximately was planned to be delivered, but now it's like it's at this location, it's at that location. And now, using Wi-Fi, which didn't exist when I was a kid, my doorbell is connected to the internet with a camera phone, essentially. I have mounted a smartphone as my doorbell, essentially is what has happened. How weird is that? And you can now talk to a random delivery. And, and this is why my wife really wanted to get that, is when packages get delivered and everything. Like now, if somebody walks up into my driveway to go steal my package, I will get a ding. I will, like, right then know what's going on. She's like, hey, I see you're stealing my yeah. package. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, uh, I'm taking a screenshot of your face right now. Like, Yeah, that exploded the glitter. He, did you know that he was a NASA engineer? Yeah. He was a, so this guy, because package thefts are um, such a big deal now, um, this, not really retired, but this guy who used to be a NASA engineer designed um, a package that, like, you would cut it open and Pull, like the box seemed like you would pull it off the top and had cameras mounted in it that were um, so like satellite link yeah or something like that and it spun a, like a motor as soon as the package came off and spun glitter like outwards yeah like now there's also I'm on reddit woodworking and there's also uh, I forget what people call it it's like evil box or something like that where you wrap up something real but like in like 18 different packages or like, <laughs> like oh, yeah. it was like do you know what great stuff foam is the insulation foam this guy like filled the box with great stuff foam and then somebody commented they're like dude you know that needs air to cure right it's still going to be wet when they go to open it he's like i don't care Good point. like it was it was actually for his his like niece or something it was like i i send him gift cards or something like that but he's like yeah she's gonna want this here and then he recorded as well, like, opening the whole thing. Um, what do we think? Do we have an idea of whether this is true or not yet? <clears throat> so they say we're going to rotate the triangle about one of its midpoints, and that's going to create us a parallelogram. How can we prove this to be true? 
Yeah, but I mean, so once we rotate it, what is then going to happen to prove this to be true? Chris? Oh, yeah, for sure. I was going to cut this in paper clips like my paper cut in tomorrow. Right? So I'm going to put it in there. So. Uh, they took them off the sign, so. Oh. So nice. now you've, you've got kind of the whole thing. Because they showed up for this uh, over here, and we've got the angle and the such and the like and the whatnot. The like and the such and the whatnot. Yeah. Yep. So it, it, this sign over here is uh, is opposite this side and equal. And, um, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <No>. Basically, yes. <laughs> So to clean up a little bit for what Chris is trying to draw, which his is pretty darn good, but if I cut this and reattach, which I'm surprised none of you decided to work with, I mean, maybe you just didn't feel like getting up and getting it, but this is the really easy way to do this, right? If I cut my paper and I realign these, I got my triangle rotator, got my triangle, and except his enter always takes way too long to load. Maybe it's just not loading. No, I got the spinny circle. So if we were to try to write a proof, right, if you had to definitively write a proof for this problem, what do we know? Like, first off, what did we do? So we can make like an if statement. If given a triangle, and this is scaling, right? Nothing special. So if given a triangle and we pick a midpoint, on any of the sides, I just knew this would show up on the screen easier. What do we know? It shows to be in the middle. But why? Because I mean, the angle. Thomas? Because the angles are, like the triangles in the middle are opposite of each other and they're congruent, you need to analyze. Two in the middle. Oh, these? No, no, not, not those. Like, of the four there, the, one that the ones like that are like, one. yeah. Here? Yeah, I did come up with that one. Just, just that little one, yeah. and then the little one, yeah, and then the other little one in the other one. And so, because they're congruent, then you can do uh, opposite and theorem. Ooh, close. Back up, hold on, fix what you just called that. It's not opposite and theorem. Oh, what is this? Yeah, That's an A. Just, it's an alternate. Alternate interior yeah. angles. What do the alternate interior angles prove for us? That the two sides with the transversal are parallel to each other. So then when I go look at, oh wait, can I do the same thing for my top and bottom side? Oh yeah, because this is still the transversal. These are still the alternate interior angle. I don't really use these angles aside from knowing that they're equal to each other. These same alternate interior angles, those are parallel to each other. And now I have a parallel, it just has to be. So if we were asked to prove this. We know the angles are congruent because it was the same triangle. Right? We just plumbed it and rotated it. We know that once we have alternate interior angles, that makes parallel lines, and we know that a shape con constructed with two sets of parallel lines is a parallelogram. That would be our proof. Now, I'm not going to make us write that one out, but that's what we're pushing towards is being able to write that out definitively. Yeah, there has to be an easy way to write that. Two column, in my opinion, but just, so, like, an what you're thinking of is, is there any way to not list out the steps or whatever, things like that? Yeah, in like, proof, right. you have to be extremely explicit, um, which does not mean bad words. It means really clear, like overly clear. So even if you can see it in a proof, you got to say it. So if it's given to you at the beginning, so our given would be two congruent triangles, right? We made two congruent triangles. Rotated and connected about the midpoint. That would be our given in this situation. Questions on that before we move on? So look at 7-2. And these are the questions. So if in A we had made a flow chart, which I know I'm assigning a decent amount of homework, which is why I'm kind of trying to breeze through this and not explicitly write out. But if we wrote it as a flow chart... I thought there was a flow chart somewhere. Maybe I was looking at a different problem. Yeah, I might have been. 
think about that answer too much. All right, so from what we just did, we have this parallelogram. Answer this question. If we had to make a proof of it. So now, let's even imagine we didn't solve the first problem. If you were just given, hey, ABCD is a parallelogram. Hey, BD, cut this, you know, from B to D, just straight line. How would we prove, and I'm going to go ahead and ask this in a way that gives it away, how do we prove that it cuts it into two separate congruent triangles? I want you to actually write this one out. So our given is this is a parallelogram. Good morning, Star Campbell, please come to the office. Star Campbell, please come to the office. Thank you. So we would write, we draw a column down the middle so we can two column. Our given ABCD is a parallel. Yeah. Well, the diagonal is cutting in half. You can do a flow chart or a tree, whatever you want to call it. I just think two column is easier. Let's randomly do this as a class. Levi, what's the next thing that you would talk about there? A B parallel to D C and also A D parallel to B C Y. What's our justification? It's a parallel. Definition of a parallelogram. Or C. So please write that out because you need to get comfortable with this. Proof is normally the thing that students struggle with the most. Well, and that, so your opinion of that is why students struggle. Because instead of looking at this as like, yeah, I have an opportunity to like really clearly list out everything I know and make some conjecture based off it, you're looking at it as, well, I have to list the stuff. I don't like it. Because you're a middle schooler and you don't want to do work. All right, so definition of a parallelogram. Guys, I am right now about to spend money to join an organization so that I can do more work on trying to fix up disc golf courses and stuff. Like once you become an adult, you decide what you care about and what you want to put work into. All right, we know they're parallel. BD is a transversal, but that doesn't really mean. What else could I say? What's next? Mm. So B, D, C. What's that? Bottom small angle is congruent to which? ABD. A, and we can actually lump in more with that. We can, with that same statement, say DBC is congruent to ABD, right? Why? Alternate and two angles. We're essentially working our proof that we just did backwards, which is why I figured we didn't need to write out one and two. Okay. What do you got? With a parallelogram, uh, it would be A, B, A, C, A, B, C, uh, and then you could do By definition of a parallelogram. So another detail. So I could up here also say A B congruent to B C and A B congruent to D C. Still by definition of parallelogram, all of that can lump in the same. Same step there. B is equal to DB. 
DB is equal to DB, that's just, uh, well, ooh, how would we reflexive. define, ooh, reflexive. reflexive. And then, but we have side, side, side similarity, and now with this, we can do side angle same. So now you would just set up the statement of what side, angle, and side you want to use. And then our final would be side, angle, side, triangle, congruence. That's similar. Sorry, I said side, side, side is similar. Side, side, side is congruent. So once we have side, 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 we really can, we could do side, angle, side, or we could do side, side, side. Multiple ways to get. Kind of like, does it matter really how you get there? No, as long as you don't break any mathematical analysis. What's the word? As long as it works. What if we add a guinea pig in there? As long as you add a guinea pig to both sides. As long as you divide by the answer on both sides. <laughs> my most traumatic moment as a, well, maybe not most traumatic. I had lost my hamster. It got out of its ball, and it was just in my house somewhere, and I assumed my cat had eaten it. Then I went to put on my skates to go, like, skating one day, and my hamster was inside my roller skates. Oh, no. No, but I almost, like, as soon as I put my foot in, it was like, Rick! like, it made, like, a noise, and I was like, what are you doing in there, Gavin? The same thing happened to me, except mine got into my backpack. My drop shed bag was full. <laughs> there was a hamster in my locker. That's awesome. And I told no one. For real? When did you figure it out? I went to pop open my locker to grab my lunchbox, and there's a freaking hamster in there. Like, oh, not okay. And then you just went about your day? Yeah. <laughs> That's not nice to the hamster. I had no other... You should have just brought All right, try now. Yo, move it. Moving on from parallelogram. What kind of shape is this? And then try to answer these questions down here. We're going to try to figure out all the details that we can pull out of a kite. Wow. I don't know, you call it a kite, that's why I said the name. It's called Kyrie. It's the person's name is usually Kip. I'm pretty sure that's a dead giveaway. Kip's kite. The question is, what makes a kite a kite? If this is a kite, and if we're going to say that, we have to know why. Well, we two pairs of pink shoes. So, should we add any labelings up here? Chris, what labelings would you add up here? You can add the two smaller sides that equal to each other, and the two bigger sides. How do we know that? Well, yeah, but how do we know it from what Kip did? Well, because they're both the same triangle. Ah, it's those congruent triangles. Yeah. So I know that between my one angle and two angle, whatever that side length is will be the same there. I know that between my one angle and my double arc, one angle and double arc, and I know this is congruent to itself. Let's put seven of them there. Hmm. What? <laughs> So, we're saying Kip has a kite. Now, what else do you notice about the interesting qualities of this kite? Like, if we look at some angles, or something. So, the sides, you guys said two pairs of consecutive sides are congruent. So, essentially, it's got to be two triangles. Like, congruent triangles put together. Is there anything definitive that needs to be true beyond that? <laughs> And if I think Dr. Smith for a moment. When you look at the graphs that are over there, aren't they um, perpendicular or one to the next one to the next? I don't know. That should be to figure out. You just made a special. Okay, so I try very hard to be honest with you guys, but anytime I say I don't know. No, 
So what you're saying is this, right? Two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. And Jacob just hypothesized or made a conjecture that this creates a right angle. Can you prove it? And then Jake, Jacob also hypothesized that these are congruent. Can you prove it? Yeah. Go for it. Jacob. You're not ready to put it all together right now. Satya, the code word is bed frame. Oh. Completely random. That's what just got delivered at my house is a bed frame. So there you go. That awkward conversation was part of the video. That might as well be the code word. Okay. No, wait, let's change the code word like halfway through. No, let's change the now, code again. Now, how about this? I'm going to change the rules. If all of you tell him what it was, then no one gets points. If he figures it out on his own, then he gets it and we get it. Or if he doesn't get it, I'll still be mad at him. <laughs> I like that this idea. So really, as long as we shut up, we get points. I just don't like the whole, hey, Sati, you don't need to watch the video. The code word's this. That's not fair. He should watch and know what we did in class today. Even yeah, if you watch and, it. and if he doesn't we watch it, watch he won't know that there's a code word. You can tell him that he, the video from class is played through and he'll benefit when he watch it. No, no one say anything. If he doesn't, then... He who? He who? There we go. Alright, so we know those congruent sides, like the, the ones that are on here, but we're wondering about these. I know that that's not going to be any sort of formal split there. Hmm. We knew that these opposite angles were congruent to each other. Mm -hmm. By reflexive property, Chris had me put like seven little tick marks, or I'll put like four since we cut this. But still, from this point, that's congruent to itself. What else? So this is what we're trying to figure out. So these triangles up now, wait, we don't know these yet, though. Remember, I put those there hypothetically. Uh, those well, are they're the same. Hold on, triangles. under what? Uh, it just says we do side angle side. Mm, so even if I remove those, how can I do side angle side? Because it involves the numbers. Oh, so that, it's not really an altitude, but that line that we dropped, we can say bisects. Or are you saying these angles up here? Which would those be angles you were talking about? Both of them. Yes. And here. Yeah. Because we knew these opposite angles were congruent to each other before we even put this line across. So then. Oh yeah. And we know all the angles. And then the one, and then the ones like at the top are also the same. Both ends are the same. So that has to be true. That has to be true. So that's a bisector. So do we know that it's 90 degrees though? Um, we know it's a bisector because it's going straight in between the lines. Or something. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, so it has to be 90 degrees. So why does it have to be 90 degrees? It's perpendicular to the plane. How do you know that's perpendicular? What do we say about these two triangles? They're the, they're the same degree. They're congruent, right? What do we say about these? 
these two triangles? They're congruent. They're congruent. What do we say about these two triangles? Yeah. For all three of those statements to be true, all of these angles have to be equal, which means they're all 90 because that's together 360. So there's multiple ways we can get to it. But yeah, those have to be a perpendicular intersection. And now, because I like you guys so much, oh, no. no, well, very silly homework. But here is a graphic organizer for everything that we've laid out today based off our proofs with the parallelograms and the pipes. So Thank you. you have to check out these conjectures here. Now, it even I even gave you beyond what we did today because we're heading into um, that page three. You'll see a stuff beyond where we are quite yet. Um, that's fine. I knew that I was going to have to do that to you. So for six, ignore this for a minute. So ignore it. I just wanted to get it to you because I realize we only have 10 minutes left. Let's look at six. Ignore the handout for a moment. Let's look at six. So consecutive angles of a polygon occur at opposite ends of a side of a polygon. Consecutive, right? Like NO or PO or PM, whatever, consecutive, next to each other. So, for example, MFP. What can we learn about the quadrilateral with two consecutive right angles? So work through these problems for just a couple minutes. Then you want to prove your conjecture from these. I just wanted to make sure I didn't forget to hand this out. For it to be a trapezoid, you have to make sure you know what your trapezoid is, though. So hopefully we're comfortable with these definitions. Right from back in Math 1, we flow charted a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. But to be a trapezoid, you got to have a pair of parallel sides, which obviously means they have to be opposite each other. So then specifically, B tells us that makes this a right trapezoid, because one end of the trap is vertical. It's right. What do you mean being vertical? Well, as long as the other ones are horizontal, yes. The main thing is that they meet at a 90. It doesn't necessarily have to be vertical, because the whole thing could be flat. So, for B, if we were to write the if statement that we wanted to prove, we could say if a quadrilateral what? Has two consecutive right angles. Has two consecutive right angles, then... Mm, more than that. Yeah. Hold on, so back up. Because for the then it's a trapezoid, I could just have my consecutive angles being supplementary to each other. Right, like a 130 and a 50. That would still make a trapezoid. So if two right or if in a quadrilateral there are two consecutive right angles, then it must be a right trapezoid. Right? Not just trapezoid, but a right trapezoid. And then we could hmm? Right, but the the two being parallel could happen without the right angles. Which means right angles doesn't necessarily make trapezoid, because supplementary angles could make trapezoid. Right angles make the right trapezoid. You want to be as particular as possible, like as uh, as detailed, as specific, I guess. Does that make sense? Again, this is fairly easy for our class. So rectangles are quadrilaterals, right? And some rectangles are squares, and some rectangles aren't. And she conjecturizes that all rectangles are also parallelograms.
how could we prove this? We don't have to write it out. But what facts have to be true that allow this to be proved? I told you Mary was wrong. She was doing it. Okay, well, what's the definition of a rectangle, Chris? A rectangle is that two opposite sides are parallel. Okay, which then means. Well, so the definition of a rectangle, there's actually kind of two different ways you can define it. Parallelogram is, uh, has two pairs of parallel sides. Right. And that's what's included in the definition of a rectangle. So, really, the definition of a rectangle is. Um, quadrilateral with four right angles. Right, rectangle. Actually, the name of it defines that. It's like four right angles. So, really, what we do is we state the right angles. The right angles create perpendicular sides. Perpendicular sides create parallel sides. And then we drop that out of here. Right. So, if we wanted to totally prove it, right, Jacob? Yeah. Yeah, that was the middle of a sentence. If we wanted to totally prove it, you got to do right angles, perpendicular sides, then parallel sides, and we're good. Now I get it. It essentially, in the definition of a rectangle, tells you it's a parallelogram. But we're just trying to walk through the steps of what could we say that leads us to where we're really trying to go. So in this case, could we just say it's a rectangle? No. You would want to write it, because you need to define the pieces that make that fit into parallelogram, not just rectangle. Definition of rectangle just makes you a rectangle. You gotta relate it. How is it also a parallelogram? Now it is, and we know why. Um, and then this was gonna be time to fill in your theorem graphic organizer, but I like you guys, so I gave it to you. So we have like three minutes until class is over. If you want to get a jump on your homework.